Hello, this is WD. FM, the official Walt Disney Family Museum podcast. We're your hosts, Brie Bertolaccini, Marketing Manager. And Chris Mullen, Senior Marketing and Communications Coordinator at the Walt Disney Family Museum. Another title change. Congratulations, Chris. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. They're coming fast and furious at me now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome back to our monthly museum musings episode where we keep you updated on upcoming museum happenings. Make sure you are subscribed to our podcast so you never miss an episode. Visit our website to read the show notes from today's podcast posted to our blog for more information and links mentioned today. Let's kick off today's episode with some exciting news. We are thrilled to welcome you back to in-person programming at the Walt Disney Family Museum. Our first in-person programming is Preserving Lucasfilm's Collection with Archivist Madeline Moskowitz on Saturday, August 14th. Join Madeline, guardian and steward of Lucasfilm's collection of screen-used Star Wars props, costumes, and related ephemera. Brie, you knew that I was not going to pass up an opportunity to say ephemera. For a special (laughs) presentation about her duties and responsibilities, ranging from cleaning, storage, and transportation to consultation for replica makers and costume designers. That's going to be a really exciting program. And if you've been following our public programs recently, this is the second of our archivist um, talks, our archivist programs. We had one with um, Jim Henson, company director of archives, Karen Falk, who actually introduced us to Madeline Moskowitz. So this will be a really fun, um, fun time. So we're also bringing back our autograph sessions for certain programs. So beginning with Madeline Moskowitz, um, immediately following the program, the speaker will remain in the theater for a socially distanced autograph session. This is available only to in-person program ticket holders. This has always been one of our favorite parts about our public programs in the past. I mean, where else can you get to meet our wonderful program presenters face-to-face? So this is a huge perk. Totally agree. We get so many great speakers from such a wide range of industries, and being able to meet them is such a unique experience. And we want that experience to be as safe as possible. So... To provide a safe and comfortable space for all visitors, we continue to require guests and staff to wear masks, regardless of vaccination status, while in all museum spaces. This program will be hosted at a reduced capacity to allow for appropriate social distance between parties. Upon arrival, all ticket holders will be asked for either proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test within the 48 hours prior to the event. Don't worry. Photos of vaccine cards or COVID test results are acceptable. All guests are required to wear a mask that covers their nose and mouth for the duration of the event. This event will also be available as a virtual replay recording, requiring a separate ticket to view. The replay will be broadcast starting at 10 a.m. Pacific time on Saturday, August 21st, and will be available until midnight Pacific time on Sunday, August 22nd. For questions about the program, please contact the public programs team at publicprograms at wdfmuseum.org. Yeah, and just kind of to touch on that a little bit, um, if you are a member, this will be kind of the same process and same kind of um, setup to watch our virtual replay recordings as you've been doing to access our members only channel. So if you're a little hesitant, that's um, that's going to be the, the main setup. So you don't need to worry if you've already been familiarized with that system on Vimeo. On the virtual program scene, we have an upcoming Happily Ever After Hours program called Storytelling Pride with Pixar layout lead Andrea Go and editorial coordinator Jake Kaplan on August 17th. Pixar Animation Studios is committed to ensuring that talented individuals find access, opportunity, and belonging as issues of diversity, equity, accessibility, and inclusion continue to be spotlighted and given greater voice. Join us as Pixar layout lead Andrea Go and editorial coordinator Jake Kaplan discuss their roles at Pixar and how hashtag PixPride initiatives have affected them in their personal lives and work at the award-winning animation studio. That's going to be such a good time. We always love our talks when our our Pixar friends come to tell us what they've been working on. On Wednesday, August 25th, we have a very special virtual program, My Career in Disney Animation with Disney legend Andreas Deja. Join us for an interview with Andreas as he discusses his decades-long career with the Walt Disney Studios and work animating many iconic characters, including Gaston in Beauty and the Beast, Jafar in Aladdin, 
and the titular hero in the Roman mythology-inspired Hercules. We previously featured Andreas's work in Deja Vu, The Art of Andreas Deja, a 2017 special exhibition. Deja was also guest curator of our 2019 special exhibition, Mickey Mouse From Walt to the World. I have a funny feeling that we haven't seen the last of our collaboration with Andreas. Stay tuned. Andreas has done so much for the museum, and we've always loved highlighting his work, so we cannot wait for this virtual program where he's really going to you know, showcase a lot of the special characters that he's brought to life throughout his career. So make sure to join as a member to be the first to know about our upcoming programs and early access to tickets. Members get access to our members-only channel where you can watch back past public programs. Visit waltdisney.org forward slash membership to learn more about ways to join and support the museum. Now it's time to get into some Disney dates. August has a lot of important dates in Disney history, so let's hop into a doom buggy and get going. When the Haunted Mansion finally opened to guests on August 9th, 1969, its 999 resident ghosts were ready to socialize, but a swinging wake is not complete without suitable musical accompaniment. While the attraction opened after Walt's passing, it was an attraction that he always envisioned. Even from the early concepts of Disneyland, there was always a haunted house included. The Haunted Mansion is a staple in Disney parks around the world and is always a staple to me in every visit to Disneyland. Bree, what is your favorite scene in the Haunted Mansion? Well, Chris, that is a tough one. I, I do love the Haunted Mansion. I was, however, a very scared child growing up. And I just remember being around 10 years old and being forced onto the attraction. I covered my eyes throughout the entire ride. Um, but, you know, since to, I've since the attraction's grown on me and I really love it. Um, there's a really great kind of mythology and a lot of great history, imaginary history with this attraction. I really love the stretching room. I think that's my favorite um, out of the entire attraction. It's the first time as a child, I just remembering, how are they doing this? Um, there's no windows, there's no doors. And I just remember being really freaked out when um, the ghost host announced that. And I was like, you're right. How am I getting out of here? This is terrifying. Um, so just the magic of the special effects and just the, a unique way to use just an elevator, that really sparked my imagination and took me a lot of years to you know, finally, once I was able to use the internet, uh, look it up and figure out that it wasn't even an elevator. Um, there wasn't, you know, it, but I just love that it really is making that kind of full realization of practical um, magic. So, and I just really love the stretching portraits. Um, those are beautiful art. And I just love that they, um, just by stretching, showing more to the story. Um, it's just a very fun storytelling tactic. So back when I was a volunteer for the museum, I was stationed at Leading Ladies and Femme Fatales, the art of Mark Davis, that exhibition. And we had a loan of one of the artworks that Mark Davis did. Um, this was a loan from the Walt Disney Imagineering. And it was of the older woman sitting on top of her husband's gravestone. And it was just so incredible to see that it was ended up being kind of a small portrait that he had done. Um, but it was so cool to see that in person and then see it then translated into the huge stretching portrait um, that since has become so popular. Um, I visited the Walt Disney Imagineering Archive a couple of years back and got to see the original full-size stretching room portrait paintings. Um, so that was just like peak uh, cool. That was so awesome. Um, and I just also really love when the doors open, you, the queue. The queue is awesome. And from the elevator to boarding on a dune buggy, there's just so many great practical special effects happening um, in that room that just kind of trick your eyes. I love the statues that look like when you're moving that their their eyes are following you. So that has to be my favorite. Chris, what about you? Well, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the Leading Ladies and Femme Fatales exhibition. That was the exhibition that was on display when I first started at the museum uh, as a guest experience associate. So that exhibition and all of that great artwork by Mark Davis uh, definitely has a special place in my heart. Um, and it's also really funny that you also had an experience covering your eyes on the Haunted Mansion as a child, uh, because it makes the attraction that much scarier. I still remember peeking through my hands, uh, not looking the entire ride to see a hitchhiking ghost in my car, my fears being completely validated and not looking again until it was time to disembark. Parents, listening, uh, take it from us. If you're taking your child on the Haunted Mansion, make sure they keep their eyes open. Keeping their eyes closed is way scarier. 
Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> but to, to answer your question, um, my favorite scene is the ballroom. Uh, as you know, I was just there recently uh, and I had the experience to, to just take it all in. And I love all of the uses of the Pepper's Ghost optical illusion, especially the ballroom dancers and the portraits of the dueling gentlemen. Uh, my favorite item to look for in the ballroom is the original organ from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Of course, many may not know that uh, the 20,000 Leagues organ has had a home at Disneyland since just a few weeks after park opening. There was an exhibit of sets from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea in Tomorrowland from 1955 until 1966, prior to the opening of attractions such as Adventure Through Inner Space, People Mover, and Carousel of Progress, fresh off of its successful run at the 1964-65 New York World's Fair. So that's personally my favorite thing to look for, you know, with all the, the ghosts coming out of the organ and just knowing how much of a cool piece of Disney history uh, that is, that, that ties not only the parks, it, it being a, a parks item, but coming from the, the studios as well. Yeah, that's an incredible piece of trivia. I always love looking for that organ. And that ballroom is just so, it's just full of so many ghosts and so many things to see. I feel like I see something new every single time. But I, I personally really love the dueling ghosts. I feel like they're very underrated. <laughs> Especially after Hamilton. Now, now yeah. we have a contemporary context for a famous duel. And now you yeah. can go through the ballroom and see them. And you're like, oh, that's just like Hamilton and Burr. <laughs> I love that. Well, our next Disney date on August 13th, it's also my birthday, um, celebrate the 79th anniversary of the release of Bambi. Bambi was a unique film that uses the artwork of Tyrus Wong to create an ethereal and Chinese-inspired look and feel to the backgrounds. Another artist that debuted her incredible work on Bambi was Retta Scott. So Scott was the first credited female animator at the Walt Disney Studios. She animated the hunting dog scene in the film. And according to her contemporaries, including Disney legends Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnson, she was masterful in drawing animals. So we have some of her charcoal drawings of the dog scene on display in the museum's galleries. And we'll also share an article about her work on Bambi in our show notes. So check it out on our website. Our next Disney date on August 16th. Celebrate the birthday of the King of the Wild Frontier, Disney legend and actor, Fess Parker. Walt hand-selected Fess Parker to star as Davy Crockett after seeing him in the 1954 sci-fi film, Them. That's them with an exclamation point if you're keeping track at home. Due to the massive success of Davy Crockett, kids around America yearned to dress like their frontier hero. In the nationwide Crockett frenzy, Disney licensees sold over $300 million worth of merchandise. Fess Parker starred in four other Disney films, Westward Ho the Wagons, The Great Locomotive Chase, Old Yeller, and The Light in the Forest. On August 20th, celebrate the life of Disney legend and Imagineer Harriet Burns, the first female Imagineer. She began her career at the Walt Disney Studios in 1955 as a set painter on Mickey Mouse Club before joining wed enterprises in the model shop so throughout her illustrious career she contributed to the matterhorn bobsleds Walt disney's enchanted tiki room great moments with mr lincoln pirates of the caribbean and the haunted mansion and that's just to name a few she has her fingerprints all over the park um, and to tie her birthday with another one of our disney anniversaries um, harriet was one of the original models for madame leota in the haunted mansion it's a little fun fact they filmed her to appear in the crystal ball but unfortunately her features were a little too small and so the apparitional duties were given to Leota Tombs, who worked for Harriet at the time. August 29th will be a super califragilistic expialidocious day. Only needed one take to celebrate the anniversary of the release of Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins floated down on her umbrella, played games, all sorts, and enchanted audiences worldwide. After its first publication, Walt received a copy of P.L. Travers's Mary Poppins, inscribed by its American publisher, Eugene Raynal. Quote, To Walt Disney, not another Mickey, but I think you should like our Mary. And like her he did, as did his daughters. Walt's daughter Diane, our co-founder, in particular enjoyed reading Mary Poppins, inspiring him to pursue the film adaptation rights. The story of Walt trying to get the adaptation rights from author P.L. Travers 
would be dramatized into the superb 2013 film Saving Mr. Banks, a film that is a favorite in my family and actually inspired me to visit the Walt Disney Family Museum for the first time. The film begins at this point in the filmmaking process, focusing on the creative differences between Mrs. Pamela Travers, played by Emma Thompson, and the Disney team represented by screenwriter Don DeGrotti, played by Bradley Whitford, songwriters Richard and Robert Sherman, played by Jason Schwartzman and B.J. Novak, respectively, and Walt himself, played by National Treasure and Bay Area native Tom Hanks. Some of those differences revolved around which chapters from the book to use in the film, the inclusion of musical numbers, and the use of animation. Plenty of hard work, collaboration, and a fair amount of stress was required to bridge these creative differences. As hinted in Saving Mr. Banks, a major source of this stress came from the protectiveness Mrs. Travers felt for the character of Mary Poppins. Walt, who lost Oswald the Lucky Rabbit and nearly lost Mickey Mouse early in his career, could certainly see where she was coming from. I totally agree. Well, Tom Hanks visited the Walt Disney Family Museum when researching the role and met with museum co-founder and Walt's daughter, Diane Disney Miller. Um, we have an interview with Tom Hanks on our podcast feed of an archive episode way back in 2014, um, where Tom explores how he went about portraying Walt Disney on screen. Mary Poppins is one of my favorite films and has so many adventures throughout the story. Chris, what is your favorite scenes? Well, as a fan of dad jokes and wordplay, I certainly enjoy I Love to Laugh with comedic genius and Disney legend Edwin. But my favorite might have to be just everything that happens in Bert's chalk drawing. The way that they use the optical printer to seamlessly put Mary Poppins, Bert, and the children in an animated world seemed to be a real full circle moment for the Walt Disney Studios. Walt gets his Hollywood beginning with Alice's Wonderland, starring Kansas City's Virginia Davis as a live-action girl in a cartoon world, and achieves arguably his greatest critical and commercial success in film, doing the same thing over 40 years later. It's only made more perfect that we have optical printer number two in our galleries, with Dick Van Dyke himself explaining how the printer was used. So I just think that that's really cool. Uh, Bree, what about you? What's your favorite scene from Mary Poppins? That's a tough pick. I did have to rewatch this entire film just to come up with a pick. Um, you know, hard, hard day at work. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Real, real tough uh, assignment there. <laughs> <laughs> I, of course, get very weepy during Feed the Birds. And it's hard not to think about how, you know, that was Walt's favorite song and the story about how he would request the Sherman Brothers to play the song often. Um, so, so that always kind of gets me in my feels, just knowing how much that song meant to Walt. Um, so... I also, I, I just really love the music in this film. The Sherman Brothers really knock it out of the park with this one. I really love the spoonful of sugar sequence. And that's the first time you really realize that Mary Poppins is not your typical nanny. There's some great special effects. Um, the, the Robin is the first audio animatronic that was ever created that's featured in this scene. Um, so that is a, you know, just a really special special scene. Um, and I just kind of love all the chaos, chaos that ensues and all the great special effects. I always wish that I, as a child, um, had these kind of snapping abilities to just clean up my mess because that would have been so much easier. <laughs> yeah, the, the amount of times that I snap my hands at my uh, toys on the ground or my clothes strewn about, uh, it never worked. But one of these days, it definitely will. I I'm telling you, and I'll let you know, too. I'll, I'll mention it on the podcast next time it works. Uh, with that, it brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you for tuning in to WDFM, the official Walt Disney Family Museum podcast. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Email us questions or comments at podcast at WDFmuseum.org. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at WDF Museum for all the latest updates. From both of us, and the man with the wooden leg named Smith, keep moving forward.